Hello and welcome to PMDD with C. I hope you're looking after yourself, yourself, yourself. Um, I'm not going to edit that out. How are you? Um, I hope you're feeling okay. And if you're in those deep, dark depths of the PMDD phase, I really do hope you're taking extra care of yourself. Um, today's video, I wanted to share something that really helped me understand my um, pattern. Um, and it is obviously it comes from this amazing book that <laughs> I haven't been taking very good care of um, called The PMDD Phenomenon um, by Dr. Diana Dell and um, today we're going to talk about the cyclicity patterns. Now when I read this um, it really helped me understand my cycle um, and it also helped me validate myself as well and um, when I read this part of the book I was like yeah, no, this sounds like me. And it helped me, yeah, validate my own um, symptoms and PMDD. So without further ado, let's just get into it. So basically, um, it outlines five possible distinct patterns of symptom presentation across the menstrual cycle. And she depicts it uh, with graphs here. So I'm just going to read this out to you and if you haven't already bought the book, I'm not sponsored obviously because I've got like seven subscribers. Um, I just think this is a really good resource and I'm going to keep showing you snippets from this book until you buy it. So let's just um, read the page, shall we? So there are five possible distinct patterns of symptom presentation across the menstrual cycle as illustrated in the following graphs. Um, so number one is the spike pattern. So let's just look at the spike pattern. Now this is me, um, this is my cycle. And the spike pattern means this is the most common pattern. Symptoms begin three or four days before a woman's period is due. Their intensity increases sharply until the day before menstrual bleeding begins and then disappears within hours or a couple of days, so mine symptoms reduce within hours of bleeding. So yeah, this this is the spike pattern and this is definitely my pattern. Um, in total, symptoms are experienced for about five days each month. Here is the dotted line and that means um, ovulation starts. And then this line is the first day of menstrual bleeding. The solid line so ovulation and menstrual bleeding okay so the next pattern is the peak and spike in this pattern there are a few mild symptoms at the time of ovulation that last about 48 hours followed by more severe symptoms that begin about a week before a woman's period is due so i'll show you the pattern first before i read the rest out to you so you see there's a little spike during ovulation and then it um, reduces and then there's um, a spike just poor bleeding. Their intensity again increases although a bit more slowly than with the spike pattern. Reaching their peak the day before menstrual bleeding begins, symptoms disappear entirely within three days. In total, symptoms are experienced for about 12 days each month. So that's the um, peak and spike pattern. Then the next one is the peak and mesa or mesa pattern. Um, so as you see here, that's what that looks like. In this pattern, there are again symptoms at the time of ovulation that last about 48 hours, but then more severe symptoms kick in almost immediately and last until two or three days after menstrual bleeding begins when they disappear entirely. In total, symptoms are experienced for about 15 days each month. So that's, that's that pattern. Do let me know which one you have, if you have any. Um, butte pattern. In this pattern, symptoms are relentless. They start at the time of ovulation, reach a severe level very quickly and remain at a high intensity about four days after menstrual bleeding begins. And that's what that looks like. So you're gonna hear someone whistling in the background because I'm recording this and I'm at like half four in the afternoon. So they start at high 
So this pattern, symptoms are relentless, they start at the time of ovulation, reach a severe level very quickly and remain at high intensity until about four days after menstrual bleeding begins, after which they disappear entirely until the next ovulation. In total, symptoms are experienced for about 20 days each month. Careful clinical evaluation will almost always indicate that this is a form of premenstrual exacerbation of an underlying physical or emotional condition. And then the last one is the um, PME pattern. So in PME, some low level of symptoms appears all month with no symptom free period. The actual timing of the spike and level of symptoms may differ from those depicted here. So premenstrual exacerbation. Um, and you can see here that this shows that there must be an underlying um, other mental health pr um, problem or disorder or whatnot. Because you're experiencing symptoms all the way through the month, but then they obviously increase um, during your PMDD phase. And yeah, so I just thought that was a really handy um, visual guide of what your pattern could be and the only way to find that out is to log your moods um for at least two months um i would just do it all the time um i haven't done a video about logging it yet but um it's really simple you can do there are loads of resources out there um or you can create an excel spreadsheet or you can download the pmdd app me versus pmdd and you log your symptoms every day it is useful to do it at the same time every day probably in the evening just so you can get a, a broader overview of the day um but with that you can actually weedle out any patterns um so when i did my diary a few years ago i noticed alongside having the spike pattern i noticed that i would get quite down if I was ill as well, which um, I never thought about before. So if I had a cold, my um, sadness would go up. So I've noticed that in my mood diary as well. So you never know what you're going to find out um, until you actually accurately log how you're feeling and do it truthfully. No one's going to be looking at it because I know sometimes when you log these things, you sometimes you you skew the results for whatever reason, but this is for your benefit. So do it truthfully um, because you, you may have PME and even though you might not think that you have PME, you might have it. <laughs> so it's really good to just record your patterns and then you can decide which of these, if any, you have. And then um, basically it's, it's all in aid of um, learning how to manage your PMDD because if you know that you've got one of the more severe patterns you can look into things that may help um, a more severe pattern of PMD etc so um yeah I just thought that was really handy it's very good to see visually um and this book is honestly just so good <laughs> um I hope you're looking after yourself and I'll see you very soon bye